Good morning, friends. It's Alexor again. And as you can tell, it's a very, very different look today <laughs> because I have construction uh, at home for a whole week in our living room and in my office. So, um, yeah, I now uh, degraded to the second office, which is, as you can tell, not really set up in any shape or form. And the setup is all not where it should be, lighting, etc. It's all fine. It's just going to be a week. And then we're back fully. But for now, we have to do it like this. Feels bad. Anyway, people have really urged me to watch this or like to react to this whole Path of Exile and content reveal for the next league, which I looked into it a little bit. I looked into it already a little bit. Um, it looks absolutely great. So I'm not completely blind going into this video. I saw a, a bunch of it. And I should also mention, if I look at my Steam and go to Path of Exile, I currently have 36 hours in Path of Exile. I did not play that much. I didn't even finish a campaign once. Uh, I streamed it a while ago for these few hours. Got to act, what is it, um, seven or something? Chapter seven, I don't even know the acts and chapters. I know nothing. I know how it works, but I have like 0.00001% understanding of the entire game. So my view of this is really getting coming from a noob in Path of Exile. And especially, I will be playing this league because it looks absolutely great for one key thing I will show in a second. But um, I need you guys' help. So it launches, I think, on 27th or something like that. Pretty soon, in like a week. So join my stream and please help me with this game. Okay, It looks really cool. I really want to get into it for so long, especially with Path Exile 2 coming along. But um, yeah, I need you guys' help. So all the Path Exile Gs come to stream and help me out. Anyway, for now, we're going to look or like watch this together. While I react to this, probably not the whole thing because there's apparently a ton of shit. We'll see if we can make it. To GGG Live. Today, we're going to show you an exclusive reveal of Path of Exile Settlers of Kalgar, which launches next week on July 26th. 26, Twitch all right. drops are enabled on today's live stream, so make sure you follow the instructions below in order to claim your Corsair back attachment. Yeah, I missed that. <laughs> in today's stream, we will take you on a deep dive into the new Settlers of Kalgar Challenge League. We'll cover the league mechanics, its new and revised crafting systems, a new trade market system for currency, some sweeping balance improvements, including two ascendancy class changes, end game improvements, some further additions to the campaign, and some quality of life features. We'll then talk about our console native. I'm probably going to switch all the whole balance stuff because them. I don't know about Finally, this. Finally, we'll show you our new supporter packs, ending with a live Q and A session where Ziggy D will ask Path of Exile's game director Mark your questions from Twitch chat. After the live stream, we'll drop the full patch notes. I'll hand over to Mark now to introduce the new league. We've really innovated with the content in this league, and I'm really excited to see what everyone thinks. So let's just get right into it with the trailer for Path of Exile, Settlers of Kalgur. Wait, is that the trailer we already saw? Or is this the new thing then? Right away. Ray class is a curse. Actually, why am I not making this full screen? You have to be mad to settle here. <laughs> and yet, welcome to King's March. It's not much yet. This but with is your help. We can erect the greatest city Ray class has ever seen. This is really the coolest thing. I saw this we'll in the trailer. Resources that you can now build your own hometown, so to speak. Planning. So it's now an RTS. Basically, right? It's like Enno. Whatever Enno title. And I Soon played Enno a lot. Settlers. To get it in an ARPG? Craftsmen. That just sounds really cool. Fortune seekers. And of course, pirates. Yeah, so this is too dropping in a whole anchor, man. That's crazy. But if we prevail, this is exactly my stuff. This will right? be heavy with gold. Just micromanaging we hope some sort of empire, economic stuff, like this. We hope to build a home. And this is apparently a huge thing, right? The currency exchange. Um, some people gave me some orbs back in the day on stream. I don't know, they're apparently they are rare. I, I don't know. So I guess this is much better now with the currency system. Also melee, right? Because melee pretty much sucks in any ARPG, doesn't it? 
turn down the music a little bit. Melee pretty much sucks in any ARPG. Or is there any good ARPG you know of that melee actually does well? Because like um, ranged or castles are usually Kirk, better. You will encounter some familiar faces from the Expedition League. Danig, Rog, Tujin, and Gwynin are Kalgurin people who are trying to establish trade between Rayclast and their homeland. They have recruited many curious characters from Rayclast, including some you may recognize, but are also seeking help of a powerful exile, like yourself. Let's be honest, right? This game is what? 11 years Johan, old? The King's Hand and Lion Eyes Watch. Something like that. It still He's looks very good for workers, that age. Traders and exiles. Johan, under the command of the King of Kalgur, has been sent here to build a new city called King's March, which intends to become the hub of commerce between Rayclast and Kalgur. Soon, he will bring you to the planned site for King's March, which you'll notice has humble beginnings as just a tavern in a field. But with your help, it won't stay like this for long. Yeah, it's so awesome. It takes a lot to build a town. The Kalgurans will ask you to seek out resources that can be used to begin construction. On your adventures, you might find minerals such as crimson iron, which are veins of iron that have been over. Oh, that's actually kind of cool. So you have to fight, foes when like you play your classic RPG to get minerals to build your town. Liberate from the demons worshiping it. Petrified amber attracts mindless, blighted enemies. While Bismuth has a strong affinity to the elements and causes the area to become unstable. That looks cool, man. If you're oh, lucky, no. you might find Verissium. A Verissium. material as valuable as it is dangerous and guarded by very powerful foes. Once you defeat these monsters, the deposit will automatically be tagged for mining. But first, we need to get someone to do the hard labor. This is, of course, a trade expedition and nothing is free. Miners, along with other workers that the Kalgurans have hired, must be paid in cold, hard gold, which you'll notice is now dropping throughout Rayclast. You will have control about who gets hired. Yeah, this wasn't a thing time. before, right? You cannot just randomly Once pick up gold. Accumulated some gold. Finally. Go to the town and talk to the recruiter, Ralph. He's been busy tracking down hardy folk across Rayclast who are looking for work. <laughs> you'll notice each person has truly really like Eno, isn't it? And a wage cost. It'll be up to you to hire and fire as you please. Over the course of the league, you'll be searching for your perfect employees for each job. Once you have them, you'll have to keep them paid, safe, and alive, which we'll get into later. Here we have a prospect who has a specialty in mind. What is all this in the bar, we'll then? We'll start with that so we can begin to retrieve some of those resources we were talking about earlier. Promising pick. Let's go find some more and put our miner to use. The idea is so cool though that you actually oh, just play your ARPG classically Alcohol. with your with killing monsters and shit and mobs and use crime. that to build your own town. The demons, them power. Who needs hideouts, right? Them, you you can just can have an entire town. It's crazy. After that, we can tag the ore, and our mining specialist will get to work. It's also crazy to me that they so do this we encounter a few more just deposits. for one league. Each with a I mean, maybe the, the whole. Um, Base building will stay or come back or whatever, but still. Your miners will get to work collecting resources in real time. It's crazy. They might take a while, but will continue whether you are logged in or not. The work can be so it's like these more or better miners. These mobile games, right? The mining station mobile base building games. To equip them with advanced where things just take for, forever to All get right. finished. Some time has passed and our but you can't accelerate it with, back to with paid gems, can you? We've also managed to collect some more gold too. We can now upgrade the town and build new structures. There's plenty of options. We just need to decide where to start. I think we'll start with the tavern, the beating heart of King's March. It can be upgraded instantly to improve the recruiter's prospects. And you can find various important NPCs relaxing here. Next, I don't know how you we'll about how you guys, but station. It's, you I've always been a sucker for these kind of mobile games and I've spent some money on them. Our newly hired workers to mining. Which is stupid, right? But you will eventually need a smelter. Just building your own town to turn into more city, even bars. like a SimCity kind of thing. Then we have the disenchanter. Where that was you can so bring cool. Your magic, rare, so this just items to fits me entirely. To, to be disenchanted over time. The items will be broken down into thaumaturgic dust, a new resource used for crafting and shipping. dust. We'll get more into that later. Oh. Okay. And of course. A town needs food. 
You they also gotta farm where you can good items to, to and break down for that. But don't worry, you won't be manually watering anything. Ah, the wonders of delegation. <laughs> With so cool. all these resources piling up, there will be excess that we can spend. Let's talk about rewards in Settlers of Kalgur. Eventually, you can build a harbour and establish shipping routes between a number of different Kalgurin and Kadori ports for trade. You'll be able to pile your acquired resources onto these ships and send them to a port of your choice. Really, where your trade It's really like a new game in Perfect, isn't it? They now Each also put return specific rewards based on the whole Anno game into this. They accept all types of resources, kind of crazy. but will have a preferred type that they'll currently pay more for. Oh, okay. And you'll want to get onto this, because eventually you could be bringing in shipments like this. Damn. This. Damn. We were just. Or even this. Wow. So it's just okay. It's just do trade and just give you items. You'll notice that as we send more Crazy. resources, this risk meter creeps up. Much like the dangers on the shores of Rayclast, there are dangers out at sea. Hmm. Monsters, pirates. Uh, basically, the more you transport, the higher you want to try keep your chance of being safe. cucked. You can do this by hiring workers that specialize in shipping. The more of them you add to the ship, the less risk there will be. Oh, like some like cool fighters. Who's famous for fending John off even the most dangerous <laughs> of pirates. Now let's get that shipment going. And we'll continue exploring Ray class while we wait for its return. This is the first Path of Exile League that experiments with true real-time mechanics. You can send out shipments, go and have lunch, and come back to your rewards. Many mechanics in the League... So it is like a mobile so base building game. ongoing project or outcome to look forward to. When your shipment That's so cool though, you set all things up, right? You'll get in the evening or whatever, and, and then next day you come back. Return to the town to collect your rewards. And re reward uh, and collect them. Safely. So let's go see what we got. They know how to keep people engaged cool. in the game, eh? Yeah? You get unique Perhaps just from the ship? As a loyal customer for the future. Oh, okay. <laughs> Aside from shipping, the Kalgurans are big on their technology. That's crazy. They've hired Isla, a familiar face from the Heist League. She is an engineer who the Kalgurans have employed for a very exciting purpose. You're not the only one who understands how profitable running maps can be. Once at in-game, Isla can help you build a series of Kalguran modified map devices. You can then put a queue of maps into them. I've never even played you maps in this game. If you a few skilled Atlas runners, they will put themselves to work running those maps for you one after another. Wait, you, you can have NPCs run maps for you? What the f Once again, you'll be notified when the rewards are ready what? to be collected. They just get the items from You can it? put lots of maps in the queue, so don't feel obliged to go back Is it like a penalty the if they do it? Be careful though. Because that seems OP. The difficulty of the map impacts the risk of your workers perishing. Try to pick your best workers, or perhaps just ones you don't like. Consider the difficulty too. Sometimes it's better to just run it yourself. You'll see there are many benefits to okay, having a see, whole when, when it gets too difficult, you got a, a whole ass town. <laughs> Let's talk about crafting services. <laughs> it's crazy that it's a you huge whole town for yourself. Building a runesmithing table. But something is kind of crazy that this is operated you know, I should by pause it here, actually. Uh, it's kind of crazy that you can have NPCs run maps for you. That's like when I think of last epoch, they can run the echoes and the monoliths for you. I mean, that's awesome. I like this because for me, just grinding through these things over and over again, hoping to find the item I search for is personally a bit boring. Like the pit in Diablo, it's just the same thing over and over again. I find this to be pretty boring. So if I can focus on my whole Anno gameplay while the NPCs do the job for me, that's pretty nice. I like that Using personally. Using powerful Kalgur and blacksmithing arts. He can engrave runic magic onto your weapons using runes. There are many rune types and combinations to choose from. And there are so many crafts that can be items in this game. Like these kind of runes and stuff. Our design intention here is to take I was completely overwhelmed by it. Usually only find on unique items. Like this modifier, which you might recognize from Doom Fletcher's Prism. 
Danig can apply it to your two hand maces. Wait, so this is basically the Esprit system for Diablo, right? You can put the insane affixes from any sort of unique on any regular weapon. There are over 100 different special crafting outcomes, ranging from ones very easily applied to very difficult. Mm. The rune types can be acquired through trade with Kalgur or oh. defeating powerful bosses. The Kalgur and tech benefits don't. Yeah, trading anything. is definitely sort of the main also thing you want to do, right? The formerly overpowered crowd favorite, Recombination. Isla is trying to master this. She just needs you to help her with getting resources. So this was OP as fuck in the past, apparently? The system isn't as strong as it used to be, but it still mm. allows you to combine two items together, hoping to get the best modifiers of each onto a single item. Between what did you get? a town, shipping, and exploring, you'll be collecting a lot of extra gold. It is now the primary resource for two huge new quality of life features that we are putting to test. Firstly, you can use gold to respec passive points. This is a feature from Path of Exile 2. How did you do this before that? It just makes sense to port back. The higher level you are, the more expensive it gets. How did you refund before that? Could you not do and this? The next one is or like absolutely respec. Massive. A currency trade market. The Kalgurans have recruited Faustus, another NPC from the high school. Faustus. He allows you to asynchronously buy and sell currency and most other stackable items with other players without the nuisance of ugh, price fixes and people who never respond. Yeah. All you need to do is select what currency you want, say what you have, and your ideal ratio. It works kind of like a real life stock market. I was going to say, it's a literal will market. Make the trade happen for you, so long as there is someone selling on the other end for the same rate or less. But it seems pretty simple if I look at this. There is no sort of. Um, like you don't have to, to run stop orders or whatever. You just set a price you want, and either someone buys it or doesn't. And you set a price for something you want to buy? You do this with, with ratios, but what does it mean? Like if I want these orbs, for example. I guess I can just buy them directly on spot from the market. By the way, sorry about the background noise there, as I said. Construction. That's interesting. I wonder how this works exactly. I guess it's going to be made as simple as possible. Also, what the fuck is this image? <laughs> You'll be able to go back to blasting monsters while trusty Faustus does the dirty work, notifying you when your currency is ready for collection. All you need to do is pay him a small amount of gold for his time. Oh, I table. see. This okay. is an experiment to see if this type of asynchronous trading has a place in future Path of Exile releases. Yeah, I hope not we some assholes is gonna, to gonna abuse this or exploit this. Now, so we actually keep this. What I found interesting, though, is that the whole gold system, right? That's a huge change to the entire game, isn't it? That there's now a gold system. And that's just in that leak. There is no way that's just not gonna keep that, right? The whole gold system. Well, how does this all work with, like, Legacy? No, I don't know what it's called in Path of Exile. Like the regular old, after the leak, things go into a, the legacy, right? Some sort of legacy thing. But not all of it, I guess. Expert in black market trade and shady deals, he also provides another service, offering items for gold. The items will generate with random rarity, and on average, the modifiers on them are better than normal. This can be a very nice way to get some targeted items during the campaign. For serious crafters, it can be a great starting point for making those elusive, specific in-game items. I see. Which perhaps you could take to the runesmith afterwards. It's worth noting that you can invite you can just to your hideout. Make unlimited of these, I guess it's called gold. Available for respecking, currency exchange, and black market items. Mm. As your town grows, it will attract more attention, good and bad. Sailors of Kalgur features three in-game bosses that will close in on your operations wanting a piece of the pie they might capture and ransom your workers even your entire ships you have to make some tough decisions will you take them on or pay them off one example of a boss is sasan the bandit lord Sassan. you won't stumble across this boss by accident instead this unsavory character can come into your town at night and take your atlas runners hostage holding them for ransom <laughs> what happens next is up to you 
Perhaps you'll refuse to negotiate with bandits, lead yeah. to a fight to defeat Sasan and rescue your workers. You die when you come to if my my town. Heroics, just... You might simply pay the ransom in gold. Or what? perhaps these workers were especially disappointing. <laughs> and you'll just leave them for dead in true Ray class fashion. They knew what they were signing up for, right? True. Of course, the heroics might be worth it for other reasons. These bosses can drop new unique items. In sum, Settlers of Kalgur is a very experimental league with new mechanics that will completely change how you play the core game. Yeah, it's crazy. We've been sitting on a lot of these ideas for a while and can't crazy. wait to share them with you. And then you decided to but throw all of them into one league. Expansion. Let's talk about balance. Well, we've finally rebalanced the Gladiator. It's been a long time coming. Like before, there are passive skills that allow you to invest in bleeding, and block. We've designed new skills replacing some of the old ones. Like this, War of Attrition, which is very handy for long sustained boss fights. Well, further alongside the gladiator theme, this new passive allows That's kind of irrelevant for me because I never play wielding, warriors. A variety of powerful bonuses. For Let's example, ahead a little. As we develop Path of Exile systems, we often find ourselves reusing mechanics, increasing their depth, and allowing more avenues to invest into them. As such, the Raider Ascendancy class found itself lacking, with hmm. many of its passives commonly available elsewhere. We want our Ascendancy classes to always feel like they're pushing the boundaries, yeah. allowing you to change your character in ways that are meaningful and ideally unique. As a result, we've straight up removed the Raider, rest in peace. <laughs> and we've added a new class in its place, the War... Oh, it's just... It's just kind of crazy, actually, how this is sort of the difference, I think, between like Blizzard and GGG. I don't know how big GGG actually is. I would need to look up um, how big of a company they are. But like Blizzard would never do this, right? They would never just straight up cut out the entire class. And the guys of Triple G, I should say, they're just like, okay, this doesn't work. Let's just cut it out right away. Just get out of here. Be gone. <laughs> And this is what I like. I guess it's also because I think they're a smaller company. So it's sort of the other phrases. They're not really restricted to being careful with things. They can just play around with it. As I said, this is a completely experimental league. They don't know how these things play out at all whatsoever. Um, sort of testing in production. But it's sort of testing with the customers, right? Testing with your community. Testing with the people. How they like it. How it feels to them. And... This is much better than just, just giving them shit, just throwing shit over the wall and then like deal with it, right? Maybe you like it, maybe you don't, I don't know. But this this approach to the whole game is very cool. Like this didn't feel right, this whole class, so let's just let's just cut it. Fuck it out of here. Let's make a new one. I guess this is why they're so successful. Gordon. This class is largely inspired by its predecessor from the Affliction League, with a few changes. The Warden now focuses on elemental attacks, changing the behavior of shock, enhancing freeze. Is this a dex class with like... And replacing ignite with scorch. Like sorcerer also stuff? a skill that allows you to go ballistic with your elemental damage, periodically. The class also grants Barkskin, which is a skill that can be used to mitigate physical damage from hits. Mm. After taking a number of hits, it increases your evasion making it a great defensive choice. Finally, the last thing the Warden can specialize in is Tinctures. These are an alternative to flasks from the Affliction League. We're bringing them back with adjusted mechanics. Tinctures Tincture. can be placed in your belt, replacing flasks. You can inherently only have one tincture active at a time, and it requires a melee weapon to use. Mm. While activated, they grant a powerful buff. They can drop as magic so items I don't care about that. or <laughs> modified with currency to grant extra bonuses. I mean, you can just equip a Here melee a weapon a with a witch, right? Feature. This one increases <clears throat> elemental damage by 100% while active. You'll notice it has two extra effects. One is that it applies mana burn every second. Mana burn is a debuff that builds up while tinctures are active that causes you to lose mana, losing more mana for each stack. Tinctures also have a cooldown, 
So once you have disabled one, no other tincture can be enabled for a time. These changes make tincture use a more active and interesting choice than it was in Affliction. Both mana burn and the cooldown can be modified through modifiers on the tinctures or on the passive skill tree. Players oh, okay. will want to maximize their tincture uptime for sure. Here we have a couple other tinctures. The poison berry tincture is excellent for poison builds. The rose thorn tincture is the choice for those wanting to deal critical strikes. Oh, I see, okay. You might be wondering, <clears throat> with the removal of the raider, where has the frenzy charge investment gone? We've added a frenzy charge passive skill to the dead eye, replacing the rupture passive skill. On top of a is that like classes, just a ranger? We have revisited a number of core mechanics. This time, taking pains to ensure easy access through the passive tree, skill gems, and simple items. We don't want all the powerful mechanics to be hidden behind layers of complexity. Let's just rapid That's great. fire through the key points. If you want more detail later, you can read the patch notes, which will be dropped after the live stream. Yeah, I've heard it's 30,000 sure words. <laughs> There's a lot of changes. Entirely so new game. Be prepared for a bit of a shock to the system. Yeah. I expect it will take several days for the dust to settle on this one. Firstly, we've made some drastic alterations to melee skills. Let me just rip this band-aid off. Melee totem skill gems have been removed. <sighs> I don't know what that means. We're trying to adopt a <laughs> philosophy with melee going forward that unlike other builds, it will be far less oriented around set and forget gameplay. You will deal the damage yourself and you should be rewarded for doing so. To compensate, we have buffed the damage on almost every single melee skill. Yeah, I've heard it. so As basically what I have, um, what I feel like they're trying to do here is no now dealing and it makes sense, like a lot of, of course, sense in my eyes. Some people might hate it, no but I think it's actually it. very good. They're trying to make Pathfinder more accessible. I feel like um, by just buffing things and making them easier accessible. Because there's also later, I think um, I've heard this. He probably might mention it that dungeons are easier now. Damage. Some of them, or like some more elemental damage. Those stats are still around but you should not expect to be getting full conversion anymore. I know where it was. Uh, I heard it from someone on Twitter. There are new uniques that grant ward, and the base restoration of ward is now fine. They changed the... the changes, like made the monsters way easier in some areas. I know where it was. I mean, this is all now, uh, all the balance stuff. I don't really can comment on this because uh, I know nothing about it. Same with the end game. Uh, That's pretty much what they were talking about, right? End game as well. So, um, I think we're just going to stop it here. There's nothing crazy really coming. Some portal packs, sure. And of course, the Perfect XR2 update. Um, so, I think what they're actually doing here... But first of all, this looks absolutely insane, right? It looks absolutely crazy. Now, what they're trying to do here, it seems to me, is making Perfect XR more accessible. And so, actually getting to the end game faster is pretty much also what Last Epoch does, right? Or did with the last... Expansion, I should say, trying to make it much more easier accessible for everyone, which is great, right? Because Path Exa definitely has the reputation of being like people even tell me if you go get into the game now, it's kind of pointless because you won't understand half it. It's overwhelming as fuck. You understand nothing. Asmogold even says he has three thousand dollars in Path Exa and he apparently understands like ten percent of the game, not even. And so, because there's so much in this game. So trying to make it more accessible to people is definitely very, very useful. What I wonder is, I know I know the same from last epoch when they actually brought down the corruption level, right? So um, getting to 1,000, 2,000 corruption is not really, it's still possible with some builds, but it's not designed for that. And they really nerfed all the builds to not even get there that easily. Many people were pissed because for them, for some reason, that is what makes the game. For me, absolutely not. I just rather would have... I'd rather get to, like, the end game fast, play a little bit around with that, maximize some builds or some items, and then I try a new class or whatever. That makes much more sense for me. I don't know what you think of that. That's how I would play it. So, um, 
Yeah, I'm just curious what you guys think of this. If you like the direction, it seems like that they are trying to make it easier to get to the end game faster and have more fun with that. Or do like also the end game making it easier in general to get items like with all the, the trade and all these stuff, you get uniques faster, it seems, right? Or like crazy weapons, you can make them yourself even. So do you think something is going to miss for, be missing for you there if, if they do this or do you like that? That it becomes easier. Also, what I'm wondering is, will they actually keep developing, developing Path of Exile 1 after PoE 2 is sort of established? Let's say PoE 2 is out for like a year, right? Everything is settled, core game is done, most early bug fixes are solved. I wonder if they keep playing on like developing Path of Exile 1. Definitely not to that extent. I got. I guess most of the like leaks like this will definitely be coming to PoE two then, not to one anymore. I guess. Um, we'll see. I don't know. So let me know what you think of, the, uh, of this whole thing in the comments. I am very much looking forward to this whole base building and shipping and economy stuff. That I'm just weird like that, but I like these kind of base building games a lot. Now, I don't understand shit about the game itself, right? So I definitely need you guys on stream to help me with that um, when we do this next week. And, but it looks, I wasn't actually even planning to play Path of Exile before PoE 2 comes out. Um, I wanted to start with PoE 2 fresh from the beginning. But since this is happening and it's a tiny new game, pretty much, I'm, I'm just going to play, play it on stream, whatever. Uh, maybe I enjoyed a lot. We will see how it does. I look very much forward to it. Great changes. And to me, it's so crazy to do all of this in just one leak. That is just mind blowing. But there it is. Anyway, I'll see you guys on stream or in the next video. Until then, have a good time.